In this cybersecurity network topology demo, we delve into the robust capabilities of graph technology to manage and visualize intricate network infrastructures. Using PuppyGraph, we dynamically trace and display the network pathways from specific server nodes to downstream load balancers, including scenarios involving failed nodes. This visualization aids in rapid identification of critical points and potential vulnerabilities, enhancing network security management and response strategies. Watch how easily complex network relationships are navigated and analyzed, ensuring operational integrity and swift troubleshooting. Currently, PuppyGraph can be launched in two main ways. The first way is through Docker, which is going to allow you to run PuppyGraph anywhere that you can run Docker. Secondly, you can also launch PuppyGraph through the AWS Marketplace, and soon you'll be able to launch PuppyGraph through the GCP Marketplace as well. Today, I'm going to show you how to run it in Docker. So for Docker, you can simply come to our PuppyGraph docs, click Getting Started, Launching PuppyGraph in Docker, and then, following our step-by-step -step tutorial here, it's just a couple steps. First, you'll need to make sure that you have Docker installed. Then, after Docker is installed, You'll then start a PuppyGraph container using this command. Just one note is that this command means that when your container is stopped based on this dash dash rm flag, this is going to completely remove the PuppyGraph instance. If you want to keep the instance so that you can start and stop it, just remove this dash rm flag. Of course, if you want to make further tweaks to this run command, you can do that as well as needed. Once you run this command, the PuppyGraph image will be pulled down and then the system will boot up. Once you've got PuppyGraph up and running, you can then proceed by logging into it. The default credentials will be PuppyGraph as the username and PuppyGraph123 as the password. Our next step, once we've logged in, is to upload our graph schema JSON. Now, there's other ways to do this as well. We can also use the create graph schema functionality, which is going to allow us to connect to a data source and then use the UI to design the graph schema. Or if you don't have a schema, you can also use one of our example schemas as well. That being said, today what we're gonna do is use a JSON file that contains our catalog connectivity details, as well as how to map the data from our SQL data source over into PuppyGraph. The JSON schema that we'll use today will look like this. So first at the top, you'll see that we have catalogs here. We'll have iceberg as well as some meta store information that's going to allow us to connect to, as you can see here, a tabular instance. Then within this, you'll also see that we have some fields here for vertices. So within this array, you can see that we have a label of balancer and then we have map table source, which says where in the catalog we will grab this data. We'll also be able to document any attributes that should be on these vertices or nodes as well. You can see that we also have service node, and then we also have our edges array here, which we can see that we have a label for request, the mapped table source where this data will come from, and then for edges, you'll see that we have a from, to, and attributes. So the from node and the to node, and then attributes that are associated with this specific edge. We also have a label for distribute, and this edge also has a to, from, and attributes property. Now back in PuppyGraph, we'll actually upload this file. I'll click choose file, and choose my JSON schema that I just created, and then I'll click upload. Now we can see that our schema has been uploaded, and we can see our service node node, our balancer node, as well as the distribute and request edges that are associated with this schema. So we're gonna run a few simple queries on this specific schema and on this data set. For that, we're gonna come over to query, and here what we can do is we can run queries as a gremlin query where we can actually see a visual representation of the output of that query. We can also do things through the gremlin console as well as through the cipher console or for others who are looking for graph notebooks, we also support that here as well. For our purposes today, I'm gonna to show you what it looks like with this Gremlin query interface. The first query that we're going to run is actually going to be a query that's gonna bring back the count of all of our nodes that have the label of balancer. And you can see here that in our data set, we have 100 of these particular nodes. Now we can also do the same for 
service nodes as well. So you can see here that I've got g.v has label service node dot count. And if I run this, you can see that we will have 1000 service nodes. Now I can also query the server nodes with a failed status. So for that, we can run this has label service node, and then you'll see dot has status and that status is equal to failed. Here, we can see those three service nodes that fit this specific criteria. If we click on them, we can see certain properties associated with these. And if we want to explore this from a visualization perspective, if I right click and click expand with all edge labels, I now can see for this service node, the balancers and the requests that are going to them that are associated with this particular service node. Again, I could explore this further by right clicking and do expand with all edge labels. And now from here, I can see all of the different nodes that are then sending requests through this specific balancer. Now, if we wanted to look at this slightly differently, we can also come over here and adjust our layout. So currently we're on radial layout, but we can also look at vertical layout. We can also look at force layout as well. Now, if I wanted to explore the data in a more traditional graph visualization approach, I can come over to the visualize screen, click start, and then I'll be able to see the data in a more traditional fashion. From here, I can go around the screen and see all of the various nodes and edges connecting those nodes. Data will incrementally load as it comes into focus. If I back out a bit, I'll then be able to see a larger amount of nodes and edges on the screen. And you can see they're populating as the data is loading. By clicking on any of these nodes, I can then highlight all of the edges and nodes that are connected to it. And by right clicking, I can see some of the properties associated with this node as well. If I had queries that I wanted to save, I can do that by coming over to the dashboard. By default, you'll see a few tiles here already. First will be a vertex count, an edge count, a vertex labels table, and then a graph sample, which is a visualization tile that can be added to this dashboard. Now, each of these are powered under the hood by a query. Here, I can see that I can set the title. This is the query that is powering this vertex count. And then we can also choose the display type as either text, graph, or table. If I want to add one of these tiles that is customized to a query that I want to add, I can click the plus button. I can then make this tile larger. I'll click the edit button. I'll give this a name of server nodes with failed status. And I'll reuse one of the queries that we had earlier. Then I'll select the display type as graph. Here, I can choose whether I want the graph layout to be radial, vertical, or force. We'll stick with radial, and then I'll click scale to fit so that as we resize the tile, the visualization will be fitted to the size of that tile. I'll click submit, and there we can see that this visualization has now been saved to the dashboard. And with that, we've connected to a SQL-based data set and exposed that as a graph using Puppy Graph. For more details on Puppy Graph, and to get started for yourself, you can go to www.puppygraph.com.